Tips and Tricks, Lower Icon Bar. In this video, we are going to go over and discuss the Lower Icon Bar and how these functions can help you in the day-to-day -day use for Visi. We'll start this video by going over the Block Control function. Block Control is a multi-selection option that allows you to apply the same settings to multiple items at once. With this icon in the lower taskbar, it is easy to toggle the block control button on and off by simply picking the button. As you can see in our selection when it's off, you will see there is no block control. When you turn it on and I go back to that command, now block control is turned on by default allowing for multiple selection. Down at the bottom part of the screen, you will also see an item selected box here. This tells you the quantity of items that are selected and increases and decreases depending on how our selection is. We can also use the toggle add remove functions that allow you to select and deselect stuff or only select stuff or only lets you remove stuff in your selection. Regenerate wireframe graphics. This option is useful if I think I deleted something and it's not deleting or if I think I added something and it's not being added, you can regenerate wireframe graphics to refresh the shading. For the next topic, we're going to talk about selection environments and the selection environment filters. These filters, when you are not in a command, allow you to choose what is selectable and what is not. For example, faces, edges, elements, and so on. So as you can see, we can select faces, we can select edges, we can turn those options off, and we can only choose solids and surfaces. Additionally to these filters, within the elements environment, you could turn off specific elements. So now I cannot pick solids, but I can still pick surfaces. The selection environment command will be used in a lot of additional commands that we'll go over later. The next command we'll review is the dynamic query command. When this option is enabled using the selection environment filters, it will allow you to get information about whatever you're selecting. For example, if I select a face, it gives me information about that face. If I select an edge, it gives me information about the edge. And if I select the corner of a solid, it gives me information about the solid. Within region creation, this will create a face on a closed boundary area that is flat to the work plane. As you can see, when we toggle this option on, you will see the region created. This region could be useful when using commands like extrude elements, move a face, edit faces. If I select a face, I can go ahead and extrude it. And as you can see, that face will extrude as a solid based off the region. Automatic wireframe constraints. When this option is active, it will create constraints within the mate data. So in our example, I'm going to create two different rectangular shapes, one with the wireframe constraints turned on and one without. When we create wireframe constraints, when we look at this through the mates command, you will see the constraints added into here. These constraints are useful. So if I were to be editing any part of that piece of wireframe, you will see the corresponding sets of wireframe added to it will update as well. So as you can see, when we extend this out using translation, you can see all the wireframe is automatically updating in relevance to that movement. Next, we will review the collision detection. What collision detection allows you to do is when you're using commands like translation, rotation, and mirror, when this option is enabled, if I go ahead and try to move something, if it's colliding between one body and a second body, you will see the bodies highlight in red where there's collisions happening. When right clicking on the option, you will see a dialog box. This gives you specific options like stop at collision. Soft highlight toggle. When this option is active, you will see when you hover over something, it will highlight that entire area. If this option is turned off, it will just highlight the boundary around that area, creating a soft highlight. When activating the overlapping elements, if I just do a simple selection on anywhere on my part, it'll pull up a list or a pull down with all the possible scenarios of selection. When this is active, this list will pop up. As an alternative, if I hold the shift key or I hold the left mouse button, this same dialog will pop up as well. Next thing we're going to talk about is rotation center. With this option off, the default is rotate on geometry. When you turn this option on, you will see a yellow sphere where it's going to set the rotation center. 
By default, this will be set to the work plane, but if I right click on the rotation center command, I can set the application point wherever I want. I can right click again and reset the position somewhere else and that changes the rotation center. The last command we're going to review is crosshair cursor. The crosshair cursor allows you to display an infinite line on your part. So for example, you can see an infinite line of your XYZ scale here. If I right click this option, this brings up the cursor options. You can turn on and off whatever you want. So if I want to display a circle on that line, I can, and I can also display bounds. I can display the circle label, radius diameter, and I could change the size of that circle. For example here, one inch. So if I zoom in on this area, let's imagine I'm trying to machine this part with a CNC cutter, I can see I could fit a one inch cutter in there or possibly make it smaller. And that's gonna change the diameter of that cutter here.